You're now part of the MCU. How does that feel? It is so exciting to be part of the MCU. Um, I've played many characters in the animated universe of Marvel, but this feels like a big level up and so exciting to be a part of such an extraordinary series. I love this show so much. I look forward to watching it every Wednesday along with the other fans. And I feel so grateful that I got to play alongside um, Tom Hilston and the rest of the cast. Everyone is so brilliant and it's just been such a fun journey. And I'm so grateful to the fans for loving Miss Minutes right away. She's just so much fun to play. Tell us about Miss Minutes. What is she and what is her role in the TBA? Miss Minutes is an extraordinary character. Nobody really knows who she is, if she's sentient, if she's AI. At my audition, I was unclear. I remember asking my agent to get more information and she couldn't. And I think it's this character that is growing and changing and is so intriguing. I love playing her. In the beginning, we just see exposition from her on a video, but then we learn that she's capable of being a hologram and interacting with characters in real world. And it's been so much fun. And I think um, Kate Heron, Michael Waldron, and the entire team behind this show have done such a brilliant job at having an animated character interacting with an on-camera world, particularly an on-camera world that's already so well-known and so beloved, and I think they've done it seamlessly. And she's this really fun character that can say the most devastating things with the cutest accent. You know, she's basically saying, if you don't do the right thing, you could die. But she could be saying, come on over for some pie, and she's so much fun to play. Speaking of that, did you model your voice or delivery after any references in particular, especially like her Southern accent? Where did that idea come from? Um, I, I didn't. I didn't model her after any character or human that I had heard. In the audition, they said they were open to doing an accent. And so I did one with my own voice, one a little bit more AI, and then one with this accent that they seemed to like. And then on the day when I got to meet Kate and the rest of the team, we played around with how much of an accent she would have. And it was a very collaborative process to build and mold this voice to make it perfect to suit this character. So speaking a little more on that, Miss Minutes is such a fun character for the audience. Tell us about working with director Kate Heron and to put the right spin on her. <clears throat> when I first met Kate, I have to admit, I didn't really know much about her career and I've completely fallen head over heels in love with her. She's a, vision she's a visionary, she's a, a force. She knows what she wants. Um, and she can ask for it without being a tyrant. She doesn't seem to have um, an inflated ego. She's so brilliant and so modest. And it was wonderful to have her participate and really give so many ideas for each and every moment. And each and every moment was crafted with her by my side. And I would work with her again in a heartbeat. I'm all in with Kate Heron. I think she's the one to be watched for sure. What was the most challenging part of voicing Miss Minutes? I'd say the most challenging part would be um, in moments where there was a bunch of action going on, like the scene where Loki's swatting her at her desk. Um, because we really wanted to make sure they were very authentic. So it wasn't really challenging, more that, that, that mo those moments gave um, a lot more time because we really wanted to craft each moment and have them all be believe believable. So each moment had maybe 10, 20, 30 different noises and beats and moments to then let the production team work with and slide into place to make sure they were right. You know, for instance, in the scene where she's jumping into the computer, they let me improvise and, you know, there were different versions of by now or that's rude or don't come back or whatever it was. And we got to play with a bunch of different things. So that was probably the most work we had done on a scene to really um, orchestrate each and every moment. Touched a little on this, but what did you enjoy most about the experience? Hmm. Um, this is one of the rare occasions 
where you're doing a voiceover where you get to see it completed. Normally in voiceover, we go first and then they animate to our voice. The only time we get to see something completed is if we're dubbing a foreign film project or TV series. And so to get to see a completed, beautifully shot, as far as I'm concerned, perfect show. And then to play off these very brilliant actors was such a treat. Every single moment of this experience was pinch me, is this happening? Um, because it was so well done. And I love when imagination has the funds and the right people behind it to make it extraordinary. And they really did. How does it feel to take your place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? To take my place in the Marvel Cinematic Universe feels so exciting, a little bit overwhelming, and I'm very grateful to be here. What attracted you to the part of Sylvie, and what do you like most about her? I think what attracted to me, I think what attracted me to the part of Sylvie is how sort of broken she is. I find it interesting to play characters who are damaged and who um, wear a sort of lot of armor, but you know, they also get a chance to show their vulnerability. And, um, and within that, um, I find, you know, that, that the most fun, the fun stuff to play. Um, She's also really funny and she gets some funny lines, which is always fun. As an actor, what was your approach to uh, getting into the character? So my approach to getting into the character was to, you know, do my research. So I watched all of Tom's stuff and rewatched the films. Um, and then I sort of tried to forget about it. And, you know, cause I, I really didn't want to just do an impression of, of Tom's Loki cause that would have been really bad because um, I'm terrible at impressions. Um, so I just wanted to um, make it my own. Um, I think a lot of it started with the fighting style because um, one of the first things we did in prep was to start um, working with the stunt team and, and work on the fight scenes because um, there was a lot to learn. And we were really um, keen on, on and Sylvie being quite sort of rough with her fighting style you know she's she's a street fighter she's a brawler she's not a trained martial artist or anything like that she just uses her strength and her sort of bravery to get through um each fight and she i think she quite enjoys fighting she enjoys the adrenaline of it and the rush of it and you know gets a kick out of um out of out of the fight and and that 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 told me a lot about her character that she's this sort of feral cat almost who you know will will pick a fight because she knows she can win um or she knows that she'll survive if she doesn't win um yeah and I think that's where it started for me how did the director Kate Heron help you uh approach the character Kate has just been so supportive right from the beginning I mean I knew Kate already and we were we were pals so you know she right from the beginning she was like so you know, I want you to just have fun with this, make her your own, do whatever you like, you know, improvise, you know, throw whatever you like at this and I'll be there watching. And, you know, if something doesn't work, I'll politely let you know. Um, so she was just a great person to have around to sort of rein me in when it was getting too much or to, you know, give me a thumbs up when it was working and just a, a really um, a, a great director um, to have, to have um, at our side and to just up trust 100%. Tell us about working with Tom Hiddleston. Working with Tom was such a dream. He's just such a charming, polite, sort of generous human being. Um, he has all the time in the world for this show and he shocks every bit of his energy into it. He cares so much and I've never seen work ethic like it. He's, he's inspiring. And, you know, I think it filtered down to, to all of us. He was just such a great sort of lead in a way to, to, to have as, as the sort of head of this incredible journey that, we, that we've all been on um, for the past year and a half. Um, yeah, and he's become a dear friend. 
Sylvie is in a lot of action scenes. Can you tell us a little bit about the training and about learning fight moves? So we started training really early in the process and we would do sort of sword drills and boxing drills and a lot of martial arts drills, basically just to sort of get into our bodies a little bit more. And it was super challenging. I just had a baby and I wasn't really in that space. Um, I was, you know, I had a lot of work to do to, to get, to get fit and active again. And, um, yeah, it was, it was challenging, but so much fun. And I, I really enjoyed sort of learning those, um, learning those moves and learning how to do a roundhouse kick. That's quite a cool skill to have, isn't it? And finally, tell us about the look and feel of the show. I think the show looks beautiful. And I think a lot of that is down to Kate Heron, the director. She had such a strong vision for the show. And I love it, like all the colors and the, you know, the different different worlds that we, you know, we end up in, the, the different locations, all so different. Um, but each have such a strong, unique sort of look on them. Um, and I think Kate was really, really keen on it looking, you know, beautiful. And I think she took a lot of references from like Blade Runner and shows like, and, and movies like that. Um, uh, yeah, and the feel of it is also sort of, you know, this apocalyptic sort of epic adventure, but it's also funny and, um, yeah, there's there's so many there's so many facets to it, which is hopefully why people are are enjoying it so much. There's, there's something for everyone. What attracted you to the role of close classic Loki and the Loki series? I had been a lifelong fan of the comics and was very familiar with uh, Jack Kirby's brilliant illustrations from the '60s comics, and. I had always wanted to work with Tom Hiddleston, having seen him in the theater, you know, more than two decades ago in his big um, debut, and was very interested to follow his career. And because we have a similarity uh, physically, we had always joked about when we'd seen his other socially about playing father and son or some variation of that. So when I got the offer to play the old classic version of him, um, at the beginning of last year, uh, I jumped at the opportunity. Great. In the story, who is Classic Loki and where does he come from? Who is Classic Loki and where does he come from? Well, he's, he gives his backstory in episode five, which is the one that I'm in, um, in which rather than describing himself as the god of mischief, which is, you know, so iconically embodied by the brilliant Tom Hiddleston, uh, the clue that I got was when he declares himself as the god of outcasts. And being the age that I am, double the age of almost everybody that I was working with, and because Classic Loki had been so isolated for all these years on these um, uh, different planets alone, he was willing to make contact with his estranged brother he, he got so lonely that he knew that the cost of that would that be immediately arrested by the TVA and then makes the ultimate sacrifice to Asgard. So I think that, you know, more than anything, that informed who and what he was and what his function is in the story, that he's sacrificing for the possibility of other people to find love. What did you enjoy most about playing him? What I enjoyed most about playing classic Loki is that I got to, I got to dress up in that iconic costume, but my beef with it was that I wasn't allowed to wear a beefed up muscle suit, which all the illustrations and the costume design had. And when I got to Atlanta and they said, no, there's no muscle suit, you, you just have to be with the physique that you've got, which is i.e. no muscles, that I was very put out about that. But once I got over that, um, it, was, it was a fantastic opportunity to work with that group of actors. Um, Tom, who I knew beforehand, but um, 
I had an especially good time and connection with uh, Owen Wilson, who was hilarious. Um, I just loved him. You touched on this a little bit, but tell us about your costume and then the influences from the comic books for that. The costume design that I was sent by email um, absolutely faithfully replicated Jack Kirby's design of the, the character from his illustrations from the 1960s. Uh, so I not incorrectly, in my view, assumed that I would have a muscle suit as I'm, you know, a stick insect in real life in order to fill out this, this part, the cape and the tights and the you know, yellow Y fronts and all of that. And when I got there, there was no muscle suit. So I found that very challenging that I was not given that opportunity to, to wear one um, as it had been my lifelong dream to have muscles. So that was a great disappointment. However, I've gotten over that because I am 64 and I've been around the block. So I thought, well, I'll just be withered old Loki instead of muscled old Loki. That's great. <laughs> what was it like working with all the other Lokis, including Tom and Sophia? I loved the fact that uh, my relationship with alligator Loki, I'm the only one who very much like Dr. Doolittle can understand and speak to him whereas none of the other ones, none of the other Lokis can. So as he, we didn't have an actual alligator or even a facsimile of one, it was, looked like three sofa cushions sewn roughly together to form the shape of an alligator. Um, I thought that was hilarious and really underlined that even after all these years, it, it's the same thing as when I was five years old, that you are, you know, you're, you're playing, you're imagining things. So um, having the stuffed cushion Loki reminded of the, the thing of, you know, pretending that I had dinosaurs made out of bed pillows when I was a kid. <laughs> um, what was your takeaway from this experience? My takeaway was that I thought that only appearing in one episode, it would be something that you know, just came and went. It's, it's like something that you do in, the, in that I had a similar experience in that I was in a couple of episodes of Downton Abbey and Game of Thrones where you're, the, the thing is so much bigger than any, anything that you could possibly contribute to it that it doesn't, you know, it's, it's like throwing a pebble into a pond. There's a sort of slight ripple but then that's it but when this was released last wednesday i had no idea tom hiddleston had warned me he said you know i think that this this you will be surprised at what an impression this makes and i didn't really believe him I thought he was just flattering me to try and ease my nerves on the first day of filming last october but the reviews and the stuff that's been on twitter and instagram uh in the last few days has completely sideswiped me. I had no, no sense or expectation that this could or would have happened. So I'm literally flabbergasted. Uh, 